Hi guys, in our last video, we have understood aggressive mode theoretically. Uh, in this video, we will see all of those things in the wire chart. So let's continue. You can see we have aggressive mode three messages as we have discussed previously. And then we have a quick mode also three messages. But in this video, we will only discuss about aggressive mode. First thing you have to notice that 12.1 is uh, initiator as source and it is replying to 12.2. And then 12.2 is replying to 12.1 and then 12.1 is replying back. Okay, so this gives you understanding that it's not the only first message. They keep changing, so it is uh, three messages get exchanged. But don't make conclusion from here. Let's go into a little bit more detail. The another thing that you will see uh, your IP uh, sec, ISAC AMP that gets exchanged over port number 500. Okay. And another thing uh, that we have to notice is because this is a first message initiator SPI will always be there because source is sending the packet, but responder SPI is always zero zero. So this is really a question that will be asked in interview, how you will identify first message in aggressive mode or in the main mode. So you can say in the first message, initiator SPI is always filled. However, responder SPI is not there because responder has not yet replied, okay? And then let's go what's there. Here we have the version. Uh, we are using Ike version one. And in that we are using aggressive mode. If you would be using main mode, you will see that here. This is Ike version one. In Ike version one only you have aggressive mode and main mode. But in Ike version two, you do not have any kind of main mode or aggressive mode. We will discuss that in our different video. Okay, so let's go to the next flags. This is really not interested. Only thing you can see like this is not encrypted. Of course, we know this is not encrypted. That's why we are seeing everything here. Nothing is encrypted in the first message. And let's see uh, payload proposal. Okay, this is interesting. So this is the header information that I have told you. So what goes inside that encryption? Okay, which encryption we are using? AES CBS encryption we are using. And the key length is 128, which is secure. Uh, then you are using hash algorithm as a SHA, SHA2. Uh, and group number we are using is 1024 bit uh, we are using, uh, but the number is four. And then you will see here pre-shared key. We are using pre-shared key. We are not using digital certificate. Another thing I want to tell you, if both the hosts are using digital certificate, you don't need to use the aggressive mode at the time. That's also an exam question, okay? Because digital certificate will never change. We uh, have understood in our last video, if there is a dynamic host, uh, if there is a device which is getting IP address dynamically, so its IP keeps changing, right? So you cannot put anything in the side to side tunnel in other side, like what is the IP address of the uh, remote end. So it will always dial up. In case of digital certificate, certificate will never change. It will be same. So in that case, you can just use main mode. Okay. So uh, what's the next? Next is a lifetime which goes in the seconds. Uh, so here uh, you can see how much lifetime is there 86400. So we have all the information of Harold and we have discussed that in first message NAT traversal goes and in second message you should see NAT detection. Okay, so they said okay, we will use NAT traversal and they detected the NAT so that goes in the uh, second message. So they all are NAT T packets and then this is a key exchange. So this is a Diffie Hellman. I told you that uh, key exchange data is sent and also the nuns value is sent. So these two information goes. This is also exam question. They can ask uh, what information goes. Uh, when I'm saying exam, I mean interview. Uh, uh, I don't know why I'm habitual saying exam. This is really an interview question. And I myself also ask this kind of question. What goes in the third and fourth message in main mode? Okay, what goes as part of TV help negotiation? You can say key exchange data and uh, nuns data goes uh, as part of th negotiation okay and you don't really need to remember this number because yeah, these are just random numbers so they will keep changing okay and then there is identification in identification most of the time identification is always the public ip address means the van ip address because uh, the external van ip address is the ip from where you will initiate the tunnels right 
uh, that's the reachable IP address. So most of the time it is that. But you have the option to put the peer ID and remote ID. If you will put the peer ID and remote ID that you will see here, okay? And then you have a DPD, dead peer detection. I also told you that it will go there, dead peer detection. Then X authentication will go there. Most of the time in X authentication, username is there, okay? And uh, then what is this? Payload vendor, okay. This is all the information we have discussed in our previous um, lecture. Let me go back and show you that, I think here. So you can see, uh, this is second message. We have not yet read that. So this is all information. Haddle, NAT, if you help me, nuns. Identification, which was IP address. DPD, DPD detection, and XAuth. We have seen all of these things in the washer. Let's see what is in the fourth message. If, if I show you my slide, I shown you everything what was in the first message goes, but instead of NAT, NAT-D goes. Also, you will see hash payload here. Let's see. Uh, what we will see here. Oh, okay, so version is there. Okay, we are using aggressive mode and uh, as part of the security association, we have some proposal. Let's see where they are. They are here, the encryption, same en encryption, same key. So we are using SHA-2, SHA-2 uh, is here, SHA, we are using, and the version is 2, but it got minimized when I click. Uh, okay, SHA-2, and then you have a group. Okay, so you can just uh, see all those things slowly by pausing the video. And uh, what else mm, goes in that? You can see that the uh, the version is also going, this is probably the Cisco's client. And the next thing is uh, dead peer detection. Okay, uh, that goes there definitely. Both peer has to negotiate if they are, that DPD is enabled or not. Okay, if the peer is down, they have to detect each other. And then, uh, what is this? This is nothing interesting. Then XAuth is there. Uh, what else? You can see NAT T, NAT traversal is there, but we should also see NAT D. I hope I am in the second message. Okay, so NAT traversal is there. NAT traversal is there. And um, identification IP address is there. Okay, here is our hash. So hash data is going, that's what we discussed. Hash payload goes here, and here is your NAD D, NAD detection, that's what I told you, right? So if, you, if I go back, NAD D and hash payload are the additional things that goes in the third message, uh, sorry, second message. Third message is magic, you don't see anything in this because this is encrypted, right? So, see, this is encrypted. Authentication, no authentication. This is encrypted at all. You cannot understand what's going inside that. So theoretically, what goes inside that, where is my packet? Uh, hash payload in encrypted form. Whose hash payload? Initiator's hash payload. Because the initiator never sent the hash payload. In the first message, he never sent. In second message, uh, responder sent his hash payload. In third message, the hash payload of initiator will go in encrypted form. That's it. I hope you liked the video. Please support me by subscribing to the channel and like the video. Share this video with your friends. It could be helpful for everybody. Okay, have a nice day. Uh, we'll see you in the next video where we will discuss the quick mode.